Thank you so much for listening to Urbanistica podcast. I am Mustafa Sharif, an urban planner, and you're more than welcome to join my big journey of exploring the making of smarter and more livable cities. Please don't forget to follow Urbanistica on the different social media platforms and also let's connect on LinkedIn. Big thanks to Urbanistica podcast partner, AFRI. AFRI is an international engineering and design company providing sustainable solutions in the fields of energy, industry, and infrastructure. Are you ready for a new episode? Let's go for it. I have the pleasure to welcome you, Emily and Johanna, to Urbanistica podcast. Hello and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely to be here. Happy to have you. How are you doing, Johanna? Good, thank you. And Emily, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. A long time since we met. Yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, today, this episode, we're going to talk about IFLA. So let's start with you first. Uh, tell us more about you. How would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners? Mm. Okay, I'm Emily Wade. Um, I am the child of a mother who is from uh, the plains of Uppland here in Sweden. And uh, my father, who was uh, from the rolling hills around Leeds in Yorkshire. Um, I live with my family in the Inn Archipelago of Stockholm. Um, and I also spend quite a lot of time in Skåne, the south of Sweden. So tell us, what uh, do you work with and what are you passionate about? Um, I work as a landscape architect. I uh, have been with a company called Landskapslaget for 20 years now. Wow. Fantastic place. Also my first workplace yes. with you too. Yes, yes. that's yeah. where we met. Yeah. Um, uh, so my profession there at Landskapslaget is working a lot with um, strategic policies. Uh, I work with heritage, transport infrastructure, and uh, regional development, you, you could say, with landscape character assessments. Yeah. And then I have another workplace, which is uh, the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. So there I have um, a position right now as an adjunct professor in um, the Department of Landscape Architecture, uh, Planning and Management. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. And your passion is? Well, my passion is really, well, the landscape. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I I'll tell you that the landscape <laughs> is my passion. It's yeah. about how we interact and how we can uh, harvest things from the landscape. Mm. And um, I like to be in uh, places and faces where you ignite things. Yeah. Uh, so I really enjoy watching things kind of evolve and grow. Uh, so you can then enjoy also harvesting. So yeah. I'm um, sort of connected to the landscape and also to the people who are working in the same way as I do. And so, yeah. Yeah. And I learned so much in the years we worked together. So it's a big honor for me to work with you. I learned a lot. And something special about you, you usually have very unique earrings. Yeah. I yeah. remember the one uh, with microchips. Yeah, like <laughs> great. I wore them last week, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My I, son has done those. Yeah. 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 I still have a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. Great. Great. <laughs> so, Johanna, moving over to you. Before you introduce yourself, I will tell a short story about you. Like before me starting this podcast, uh, it was you sent me a, a podcast episode and told me, listen, listen to this podcast. And before that episode, I never listened to a podcast. So the first podcast I listened to in my life uh, was the one you sent me. And after that, I'd be like, I want to start a podcast. Yeah. So I want to say <laughs> thank you so much again for inspiring me. Thank you. I am I could never have imagined what that would have, <laughs> <laughs> would have come to, but I'm very happy to, uh, yeah. to see you and how this has progressed. Yeah. Uh, so tell us about you. Yeah, my name is uh, Johanna Good. I'm uh, also a landscape architect, uh, and uh, I'm not originally from Stockholm, from Linköping. It's south from here, and um, yeah, I um, uh, I'm I'm just uh, 
in constant search of uh, life balance, I think, <laughs> and, and uh, the life. Um, I, I live in the city uh, and I love it, uh, but I'm also uh, always thinking about how to be more in nature and and uh, by and in the water, I think. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> so love water, yeah. I do, I do. So, um, so yeah, and I think uh, I'm I'm also a landscape architect and I... Uh, I work uh, at Landskapslaget, uh, and Emily was actually my inspiration to <laughs> <Also>. <laughs> to uh, to wanting to join uh, yeah. their team, uh, which uh, is also an amazing story. But um, but um, yeah, I I'm just passionate about I think making um, the invisible visible. Mm. Um, I think there are so many layers of both landscapes and life. Uh, that um, that aren't seen, um, and I want to find how to make them tangible to the humans, so that we can understand how important they are to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's one of my passions, um, and then swimming, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Water. Water. <laughs> the, the green blue layer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and right now, I'm I'm actually uh, employed at Architect Sweden. So the organization that gathers all uh, architectural professions uh, in Sweden. And I work as a project leader for this IFLA World Congress 2023. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is an amazing, amazing uh, role to have right now. True. Yeah. The, the right woman in the right place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Emily, let's start uh, talk about IFLA. So uh, tell us more about IFLA. Okay, so IFLA is the uh, international organization that collects all landscape architects. And there's uh, more than 77 nations that are uh, associations that are connected to this. It's an association that's actually celebrating its 75th birthday this year. Wow. So we will acknowledge this during our Congress as well. It's big. Yeah, it's big, actually. And it's um, actually a fantastic place. It's like a, a community that's both global but it's also very kind of intimate so i think me uh, as a landscape architect i used to be a delegate for for sweden so i've attended uh, many ifla congresses all around the world and uh, my first kind of impression when meeting other landscape architects is like this wow feeling we still we are from completely bi different backgrounds yeah. cultural context is contexts but when we meet, we have the same profession and we kind of, we're, we're on fire about the same things. So I think uh, collaborating in a world uh, context is so valuable to promote this profession that's mm. actually needs, that we have a lot of tasks ahead yeah. of us. And I think landscape architects can really contribute because, yeah, well, we all know the, the sustainability goals, which we, we're trying to 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 find ways to actually make this these happen. And yeah. as Johanna was saying, making the intangible tangible, mm. that's really where the landscape architects yeah. come in. So the EFLA Federation is a way to kind of promote ed the development of education and the professional development. And of course, uh, uh, the actual task we have in society. So when you gather with other landscape architects from different countries, you mentioned that you feel there is something common, common challenges, uh, common goals. Can you tell us about what challenges landscape architects face? Mm. Oh, there's a lot of different layers to that. Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think uh, on a general note, uh, landscape architects, well, actually, we, we face different challenges depending on which country we're in. Yeah. Because if we compare the two countries that are now collaborating in this IFLA Congress, Kenya and Sweden, in uh, Kenya, there's about 300 landscape architects uh, that are connected to the equivalent of Swedish architects. And here in Sweden, where there's about 3,000. So there's about, well, a lot more yeah, landscape architects. Yeah. And we can say, see that in Kenya, for example, uh, there's still uh, kind of establishing themselves on a market. So yeah. the landscape architects there need to kind of step into uh, 
different fields to be able to influence and actually plan and design. That's the main challenge. As a profession. As a profession, yeah. uh, because a lot of decisions are being made by people who are not, uh, don't have the right uh, skills for this. Okay. Here in Sweden, I'd say that we have a different position. It's fantastic to see the evolution of the um, um, the profession yeah. in Sweden. It's about 50 years old uh, since we had this uh, the education at SLU. And uh, because of the numbers, we've also seen that landscape architects are in very different roles, in policy-making yeah. positions, in in uh, uh, different, if you're a client, if you're a consultant, mm. if you're a, what, there's a lot of different uh, special, specialities for landscape architects. But here I think we have um, uh, a challenge to keep up with all the big changes that are happening right now, like the adaptation to climate yeah. and biodiversity where we can also see that other professions, again, are stepping into the same play playground as us, which is, I mean, it's welcome, but it's also taking one aspect at a time. So we, we have this really big um, task to work with the holistic solutions. Yeah. I think another, maybe we'll get into that later, but another kind of challenge for us is any profession which is in with the design professions, what's going to happen now that artificial intelligence is coming? Yeah, exactly. And we need to really uh, stand up and promote the the need for humans mm. to make uh, wise uh, considerations that uh, artificial intelligence will never be able to make. But I think that's a challenge coming. Also, yeah. Yeah, and coming in, and we can see our colleagues, the the architects, the building architects, they're also now very interested in the landscape. Yeah. So we need to find these nice collaborations, but kind of understand that an understanding for the um, natural systems is a very important yeah. part of yeah. the landscape architecture field. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, soon we're gonna hear more about like the uh, IFLA 2023. But I want to hear from you like. How was the pitch or the idea that Sweden and Kenya doing this together? Can you take us back in time? Yeah, that's kind of on a personal note. <laughs> uh, in 2017, I um, submitted an abstract to a big congress in Montreal. Yeah. Um, it was about a big design summit that also included the IFLA 2017. Yeah. Um, at the time, actually, we were working together on mm. assessing um, how could you make sure that there are enough parks in the urban fabric. Yeah. So this was my abstract uh, on working on Sweden, the Stockholm. So uh, me and my colleague, who was then just a new delegate, we were present at the World Council, which is like the General Assembly. And... Um, during EFLA congresses and councils, we have like a, an election or nomination mm. for who's going to be next. The next host. The next host. And uh, the, one of the countries that had been voted withdrew their, uh, their application because they couldn't make it, basically. Uh, okay. So very quickly, me and my colleague, we were like, should we should we raise our hand? Should we try this? And and I was a bit okay, but we haven't we haven't spoken to the one as well. But he just rose his hand. Also, yeah. So you and focus on very very good. But then uh, in the break, mm. uh, we started talking because I mean this was during the meeting. Yeah. And uh, I said, listen, there's there's something that's kind of uh, n annoying my conscience here, and that's the fact that. We are a European country. Yeah. We're always seeing this representation from uh, the Western part of the world. True. And um, at that time in 2017, the only Congress I'm aware of that's been arranged in the African continent was in South Africa mm. in 2011, I think. Uh, so we said, why don't why don't we? talk to uh, one of the Africans yeah. that are present here. Mm. And at the time, Hitesh Mehta, who is really a, like a profile, he lives both in the States and uh, has a lot of things going on in Kenya. He was at present. So uh, we went up to him during the coffee break and okay. said, 
you know, <laughs> why do you think this is a good idea? Should we try a completely new thing, this yeah. collaboration across, you know, it, across equatorial collaboration, yeah, yeah. the North and the South, yeah. the global South? He was really excited about this. So uh, after the break, we sort of rose our hand again and said, uh, listen, we want to make uh, an, uh, an alteration of our um, uh, of a nomination here. We would like Kenya and Sweden to be nominated. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone's like, oh, what's that? That's very exciting. <laughs> so we brought this home yeah. and uh, then we started working on a, like a bid. Uh, mm. So in Singapore in 2018, we proposed this, the formal kind of bid uh, uh, in, in a competition with others. Yeah. And of course, uh, the delegates at the time were really curious, what is this? And very happy about it. So we had a very fortunate voting. Mm. So maybe I shouldn't uh, go on here, but still, <laughs> we... we so we're, we're coming yeah, to Yeah, help. we're coming to that. No, <laughs> no, but just one more note then, is that uh, this kind of, the first initial planning was for 2021. Mm. Then, of course, COVID happened yes. and everything. Yeah. But this means that we've had this opportunity since 2018 until now to really collaborate. It's, but we'll get back to that. Yeah. That's really, a, actually, time has... Uh, been a beneficial for this fantastic collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. I think the stars aligned. Yes, uh, yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, they yeah, do. Yeah, and I'm I'm also curious, like the delegates, about this kind of organizing the World Congress. So, Johanna, you are the project leader. Uh, tell us what is this about? Yeah. So uh, this congress uh, happens every every year. It's an annual congress, um, and um, and so. Uh, I mean, it's it's about creating a platform for, uh, I mean, mainly landscape architects, but also other related professionals uh, who want to work with uh, with the sustainability field and the built environment and and talk about how to create sustainable cities, um, basically. Yeah. And um, and so so it's about this this platform, and it has both the the of course world. The body and the council of the the actual eFlow organization, but it's also the Congress uh, that follows this council, and and uh, that's open to to anyone mm. uh, from from different parts or for all, from yeah. all parts of the world, actually. Uh, and uh, and this year is very special because it is the first ever bilateral Congress. Uh, uh, wow. So uh, as Emily said, it's it's never been done before, and uh, and we we really. Uh, been working on uh, finding a, a good concept and uh, and a way to introduce this to that it has been met with a lot of enthusiasm but of of, of course also a bit of a <laughs> skeptical uh, like how is this going to work yeah, yeah. Um, so our um, um, yeah our our planning has been uh, really about creating the the great balance between the digital format uh, where we will be in two sites um, simultaneously in Nairobi and in Stockholm. Uh, and we will share content and stream content between those two cities. And also, of course, open up to an online audience. But, uh, but we, uh, we really think this is a very, I mean, it's a, it's a good way to go because people will have and not as far to travel they, being in these two locations. We yeah. open up to more people that can come and, and join uh, depending on where they're from and where they want to go. So I think we're really opening up something here that, that can be the future. Yeah. Um, so. And who, who, who is like the audience, let's say, who can attend this conference? Well, um, I mean, our our target groups are anyone who wants to work with these questions and uh, i mean as as ifla is the international federation of landscape architects of course that's that's one of the yeah. bigger target groups but it's also very important for us to promote this as a multidisciplinary event because i think that's also the future uh, and i know i think and i know that we know this we we talk a lot about uh, us having to come together from different professions yeah. and and these questions because we can't do it alone um, but um, at the same time um, we still need to test those types of collaborations yeah. and yeah. we need to find the real mm. ways of doing it so uh, this is uh, also 
uh, a way to continue that type of of, uh, of multidisciplinary uh, conversations, dialogues, and interactions, yeah. and how we can can continue. Mm. Um, so, so it doesn't matter like if you're not a landscape architect, you can still attend the conference and learn and exchange knowledge. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And also, like I think this is why we failed in so many different cities because we didn't collaborate. Uh, like one kind of profession says, okay, I know everything and I will plan the city and that's it. Without paying attention, let's say, to landscape or to the beauty of the architecture or to the human aspect. So this this conference is a great opportunity to to meet and to talk. Mm. And I'm wondering, what are the, the, the theme of this conference? Well, uh, it is... Um both a lot about that the yeah. the collaborations and and finding new ways and i think because one thing that we also know uh, and that everyone knows by now is that we are facing a, a lot of uh, great challenges uh, regarding both climate and urbanization and biodiversity loss for example and uh, we we know that and we do try all the time to find solutions and in both the global and the local uh, scale and how to adjust those. Um, but then at the same time, we've also developed all these new techniques of collaboration across borders, um, different types of borders, national, for example, like Kenya and Sweden and how yeah. we've been collaborating. Um, and um, and I think that's something that we really, uh, with this whole Congress, want to test. And that's been one of the ideas from the start, uh, trying out these new techniques. And uh, so emergent interaction is our overall theme uh, with, yeah, this like interesting coming uh, yeah. types of interactions and collaborations um, that are uh, targeting these these um, global challenges that, that we face. Um, and then we have three uh, sub themes that further wants to explore different layers of that um, and they leave no one behind and uh, act local think global and beyond borders and uh, as they suggest uh, it's a lot about uh, how we take place in the public space and who takes place and yeah. who's allowed to take place so it's in inclusiveness democracy in public space for example and um, and then the the whole range of working in the local scale but taking consideration to the global challenges yeah. and, and how that is done in the I mean, as landscape is always in its site-specific context, that's where we need to to start and yeah. and, and understand the impact that we have on the yeah. on the global scale as well. So, so it's a lot of uh, about coming together and collaborate on the local level, doing a global impact as well. Definitely, and I think that's I mean also one of the the big things with this being a world congress is that we. We have the possibility to exchange knowledge and ideas and experiences from different parts of the world because, yeah. uh, as Emily said before, different countries face different challenges and mm. both in terms of where the profession is at, uh, but also where and how we work with these or what type of, of challenges we face and, yeah. and that we can uh, understand each other's uh, context and challenges and also discuss solutions and understand how they can be adapted to different contexts exactly and uh, what i want to ask is also like there is a question coming to my mind it's about um, the collaboration between sweden and kenya and what we can learn from each other uh, as you mentioned emily like maybe in sweden we already like establish as a profession like a landscape architect uh, in Kenya, they they are starting and they, they are doing this now. But I guess there's still something to learn from each other, uh, even if we're, let's say, we are ahead in, in a, some aspect. But what can we learn from Kenya as a Swedish landscape architect? And what can Kenya learn from Sweden? Okay, maybe I should start. I mean, there's a lot to learn. I think if we start at the personal level, there's a lot to learn. Uh, we've had the opportunity during March here, both Johanna and I, to uh, to meet uh, in person. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is really fantastic. We've been planning this since, well, as I said, 18, you could say. 
and uh, we've only had a few times where we could interact. So, so this March into 2023, we've had the opportunity. Yeah. So on a personal note, it's about understanding what, uh, what, what do you do in your profession? Mm. Uh, how could you, how could you, you work with education? How can you uh, promote, uh, say, policy make or influencing policy makers or how could you organize your company mm. or things like this which is a very interesting exchange and i think uh that's kind of learning from each other i guess mm. uh, when it comes to learning from kenya well i mean there's a lot of things of course they if, if you see just at the the difference where we are in 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 the geography mm. they're really very close to the equator and uh, of course, uh, the climate in uh, Nairobi, which is actually the only city I've been to in Kenya, uh, is of course very different to Stockholm, where I live. Uh, so th th the fact of how you use your public space will work differently. Yeah. Uh, in Kenya, weather-wise, you will have access to the outdoor space all year round. Mm. I mean, you're not restricted to a cold winter, <laughs> for example. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's one thing, you know. How do you how do you actually design and plan a space which needs to be kind of functional twenty four seven, exactly three hundred sixty five days? Uh, another thing is that in in many public spaces that we saw now, of course, because of the heat mm. in Kenya, in, at times uh, maybe actually shade is much more important than they would be here. So a, a very big open space in a Nairobi setting is actually perhaps not as attractive as it would be here in Sweden. So the, the aspect of shade and trees are very important to kind of, it strengthens us also in, yeah. in that. Yeah, but for us, of course, it's the sun. Um, and then I think something which is a, a bit, um, so at least for me, it was an eye-opener. In a place like Nairobi, when there's more than 5 million people, and there's a lot of, you could say, my, my, um, my perception was that there was a, the, it's either private or public. It's not this kind of semi-public mm. spaces. In Sweden, we have a lot of semi-public or public spaces. And in the public spaces, then, then there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of people who want to use the space, but there's also like process of encroachment where uh, privatization is kind of cutting little pieces mm. out of the public space. So uh, what, what at least what I saw was that places which we would just call impediments or uh, sort of not really programmed were being used very, very intensely so there was another need for these kind of um, spaces that are not completely designed, but could yeah. be used actually as a supporting system of either if you have a small business or if you have an, even need to do some urban farming mm. and things like this. That's something I think we could learn here as well to how, how we use our public space. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, when it comes to the actual climate aspects, the challenges, well, drought and flooding will happen anywhere. But in Kenya, a drought is really no food. I mean, it's uh. really creating, uh, we, when we were in visiting Nairobi in March, we saw quite a lot of cows grazing in in the city mm. and we asked about it and they said okay so this is not the usual scene this is because there's such a problem around uh there's no nothing to eat so uh. they are they are taking their animals into the, the yeah into the city uh, and in sweden we we often talk about the the urban green as being a, very important for the biodiversity for example uh, so, so the kind of the other life, yeah. the non-human life in the cities is very, very interesting to see. How does that happen in Kenya? How does that happen here? Perhaps yeah. there are different forms of species, but it's still a, a very important aspect. Mm. Um, yeah. So what, do you, what did you think? What, what was the uh, things we could learn from Kenya? 
No, I so many things definitely, and and uh, I, I was just thinking when you were talking that also the relationship with nature is mm. uh, is different. In in Sweden, we we um, uh, it's it's very common that we just take it for granted that nature is accessible, and and because we have that type of um, yeah of setting here that you can walk out into the forest and um, and just access anywhere. But for example, uh, there you also have the aspect of um, animals that uh, you might not want to encounter on your <laughs> daily walk, for mm. example, um, that you need to to take into consideration. And I know they have a very strong uh, relationship, or, or so I learned uh, from our colleagues there, with with the the rural setting, and and they often have uh, houses out, outside of the city that they can. And go to and and so I think we have similar um, view on on what it gives us mm. and, and the well being of 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 that relationship. But but just that we when planning also um, it, it's different how we are able to to use nature. And so that was just uh, one thing that I was thinking about. Mm. And but yeah, definitely. There's so many things yeah. we can learn mm. from each other, and 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 I think that's. Uh, very important in all of this mm. that that it's not uh yeah it's not putting anything as as better or worse or or comparing it in that way it's it's more like how can we use this exactly uh, yeah. in in different ways mm. to mm. to get further together yeah uh, and I'm, I'm curious also about the uh, the um, the program but also like more about the collaboration between the countries like how do you do it so maybe tell us like about the program. When I will attend the the conference, what will I see? Well, uh, I won't tell you anything about the the <laughs> actual content, but I can tell you that there's there are many different uh, parts of the program, and it's uh, um, I mean it's it's two Congress days, yeah. uh, you could say, and uh, we have. Um, we have some some things running already now prior to this where we're opening up to people also contributing to the program, which is a very important part of making this uh, Congress not only a one-way yeah. uh, communication, but rather the interactive mm. and yeah, that, that type of uh, program parts uh, where you actually, the content is created by by us mm. and by by anyone who wants to contribute and that's where we share these experiences yeah. together um but then we uh we also of course have have uh, main plenary sessions with keynote speakers mm. and some of them will be in in nairobi speaking from there and okay. some of them will be in in stockholm speaking from here and and we will uh stream the yeah. those uh, so that's uh, also going to be interesting and then, uh, I mean, a lot of the the topics that we will, uh, they of course uh, are are connected to this whole emergent interaction. But we are very interested in and how we have been searching for our keynotes are to to understand um, the ways of thinking, processes, uh, and methods, and also this interdisciplinary working uh, that that we said. so we have we have tried to to. Um, target uh, yeah. people that have that uh, within their work and not only landscape architects uh, but but also from other professions uh, and some work more in in the yeah like in the practice uh, and some work more in, with advocacy or or others so that we're trying to really combine different types of of um, aspects uh, on uh, yeah planning and, and landscape architects yeah so. Um, but then we also have um, other fun parts of the Congress, of course. There are social events yeah. and, and um, we have some events already going on now with pre-seminars, for example, uh, where we try to introduce both the EFLA concept but also the themes through our partners. Mm. And so, so those, we have a few uh, coming up before the Congress. And uh, there's a student competition running right now, oh, cool. so that will also mm -hmm. be presented in a theme course that's held mm -hmm. um, also uh, by the two universities, um, Dequat and SLU here in Sweden, uh, together, which is really interesting. 
and also targeting the the student yeah. competition and then we'll have study visits and yeah it's it's just going to be filled with uh, interesting yeah. programs so uh, so keynote speakers workshops site visits uh social events like parties and so on mm-hmm. student competition as well mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, so a lot going on right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and yeah. you you mentioned uh, Johanna mentioned the course. Mm. Uh, what what is this about? It's actually a fantastic thing. Uh, we have two universities, one in Sweden called Swedish Agricultural University, uh, University, yeah, SLU, and then there's a sister university in Nairobi, uh, Yoma Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. And both of these universities, they give the landscape architecture program. Uh, So we've been developing uh, ways to see how could we exchange experiences, the teachers, the students, and the themes. So since January, the, uh, the, the Kenyan course has been going on. And uh, from January to March, we've been uh, three Uh, to four teachers that have been participating in their course by lecturing, by making crits, uh, and also giving kind of feedback and yeah. information. And the, um, uh, the courses, the course, let me start with the Kenyan course, they have been working with two sites. Mm. One is in Nairobi, Nairobi Dam, and one is in Malmö in stock in um, Sweden sorry so uh, we've been supplying information about the Swedish site and the students have been doing a fantastic uh, process of assessing developing concepts mm. and designing detailed design on a Swedish site without wow. visiting it yeah. so that's one part then in march we started a course here in SLU Alna called act local think global And uh, we are now uh, collaborating in the same way with the Kenyan students and teachers. So uh, in March now, we've had a visit from two students and two teachers from Nairobi. And they've done the similar thing that we did before. They've been giving crits, they've been giving lectures, the students have been presenting and meeting. Um, And the whole... uh, actually we are this collaboration is a kind of very interesting interaction because mm. when you meet another student you get these questions that make you uh, reflect on yeah. things that you might take for granted yeah. for example um and we're also trying to promote the students to hand in to submit um proposals for the student competition okay because we've also seen that there's um a representation from a lot of other parts of the world mm-hmm. in these student competitions yeah. but the swedish and the kenyans are they're very few so with this course that we are holding in SLU, we're also trying to ho- trying to promote the uh, the presence yeah. of these perspectives mm. and we'll see if the students also hand in uh, competitions together we 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 haven't Uh, we've said yeah. that's an option. We've said that's an option, but now then our students are working on the Nairobi site, for example, together. Together. Wow. So it's it's really a fantastic yeah, thing, yeah. and uh, we are sort of seeing that this is like a start of a great kind of collaboration ahead mm. with teaching, research, and uh, these kind of exchanges. That's amazing. Mm. So you already like started this collaboration already from school. Mm. So I, I think it's a lot to do with how we uh, teach our students, like uh, how we train them. If we train them to collaborate or not to be like super mm. individual and think my proposal is the one and all the others are stupid, you know, mm. like this kind of mentality. Mm. So mm. it's it's a really great uh, course. Mm. And I think also talking about collaboration and the Kenya Sweden, it's uh It's also because we, of course, have always had this World Congress as as one of the main aims of, of planning that together yeah. and doing that. And and um, it's been really an interesting process doing that, like in the digital uh, realm yeah. and and such. But but also that this uh, this project has a lot of long term uh, mm. aspects and goals as well. And I think that's really something that we are learning so much just by 
both planning a Congress together, <laughs> but also because there have been other initiatives uh, popping up or coming up uh, in this uh, whole planning process. And and um, yeah, so so this course is really a, a really great, yeah. I think, uh, just showcase of mm. that, how we can... How we can also see, because in in the best of worlds, it will continue uh, yeah. past this year. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and then we have other things going on with uh, trying to start some kind of mentorship program, for example, between the ar uh, landscape, landscape architects, architects, the professionals. Architects. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And so that could be really interesting. Yeah. And and um, also building a landscape lab, for mm. example, in in um, in Kenya and. So, so there's so many, many things, things that have come out of this project that are bigger than the Congress. Yeah. But yeah. then, we've, of course, the Congress is really important to us because that's where the actual physical gathering um, gathering yeah, will yeah. happen yeah, and, and yeah. this this um, platform and arena. But but just wanting to mention that that there's so many things also uh, happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But tell me when uh, Johanna, when you organize, because um, I'm also part of organizing other events. And I guess now it's a big challenge organizing this with other countries and so on. So what are the challenges that you face when you organize such a global conference? Well, I mean, I, I think it, there are all, always challenges connected to, to big events uh, and, and insecurities or, or like uncertainties rather yeah. that, that uh, uh, you struggle with uh, in, in a planning process. But um, I think... Um, just we we've done this a lot uh, testing these new techniques which was also one of the aims that we mentioned before mm. and i think uh to start with i just want to mention that it's been a really successful uh mm. planning process e e even though we've been doing it uh, in in the digital Digitally, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. because i think um because that was our starting point yeah. everyone has just been really that this is the way we're going to do it mm. And um, learning a lot in the process and everything. So, um, but then, uh, of course, I think one of the things and challenges with doing it in two countries simultaneously is to find the right balance, uh, as I think I mentioned before, also that balance between the the streamed content and the site specific content. Okay, because yeah. I think, uh, I mean, the pandemic helped us a lot yeah. in in the sense that that these techniques for and and the just the being comfortable mm. with with uh, digital congresses, for example, exactly. uh, yeah. we didn't have the say. I mean, it doesn't feel that far away <laughs> to, in yeah. 2017 yeah. when this started. But but at that point, people were really curious yeah. how is this going to work, and I think that question isn't um, uh, pe people don't ask that anymore because no. now we know that it's mm. going to work. But uh, we still need to find the right balance between people being in these two different locations, feeling that this is a congress that they are attending together with other people, being in some kind of physical uh, space together and enjoying the actual yeah. uh, IRL uh, company mm -hmm. uh, and building relationships and, and all that. Uh, and at the same time, having this as one congress, sharing content. Yeah. So that's one thing we're working a lot with, trying to find that that mm. uh, right balance. Um, and then I think another thing is, of course, uh, the the world situation is um, because uh, maybe it's not uh, on everyone's mind right mm. now to to join a world congress in some other part of the world. Um, so that's something that we, of course, need to work a lot with as well. And Trying to, um, uh, of course, open up for for digital, where we are opening up for digital participation, which of course helps that if you don't want yeah. or can travel. Um, but it also um, we need to to find the arguments for the people that could possibly still come and join, and why it's important, even though, yeah. uh, and or rather because the world is uh, the way it is right now that that's really makes it almost even more important to yeah. join together to talk about these questions and how we uh, can proceed in the future because um, we we are going to pass this uh, really shaky world situation yeah. and yeah. and um, yeah we have I, I think we need to believe that we, we will yeah of so, course 
Of course. And so that's also a really important uh, argument for for doing this right now. Mm. And uh, I guess the time difference between time zones also a challenge. <laughs> it could have been more though, because it's, it's only one hour. Between, now, now it's one hour. Yeah, it was like three before uh, or not two, two, two before yeah, we yeah, switched yeah, times in Sweden. Yeah. So now it's only one hour. Okay, that's good. It's, uh, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. So it, it would have been hard to do this together <laughs> with a country in in Asia, for example, yeah, yeah. because then it would have been or, in the or, middle of or the or night. Or the US and the US. Like I yeah, have a lot of example. things with the US, and <laughs> every time it's like for me it's a night time, you know. <laughs> And I'm look so sleepy in the meeting and everyone like just good morning, good morning. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I made an invitation to the reviewers for this uh, submission process that we have right now. Yeah. And uh, some of the reviewers are in in Australia and and, um, but most of them are are here. So the setting was that it was CET time and and I got an email back and and, uh, one of them was just like, yeah, I think one o'clock in the night isn't the best time for me to join this. <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, sorry, we'll have uh, a separate meeting." <laughs> so yeah, it's it does come with some challenges, of course. It was the same one. One time yeah. I sent uh, also like invitation, and and uh, one person replied me, "I would love to join, but it's like two a.m. and, and I'm sl- <laughs> yeah. kind of sleeping." Here. Yeah. So it's uh, I think this is the, the the fun part also of of it is doing this together with other countries. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So more challenges you because it was your idea to do this uh, <laughs> collaboration. <laughs> so tell us uh, more about like challenges. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the the kind of uh, digital world that we live mm. in, as Johanna mentioned, it's a fantastic opportunity for us to do this. It wouldn't have been, we probably wouldn't have been able to do without it. But it o- it is also challenging because. I think w- that's why it's it would be so great to visit the Congress. I think. Yeah. Because uh, even if the the long planning and the collaboration we've done so far works very well digitally, the kind of the love you can mm-hmm. feel, the real engagement is when you meet. Mm, the energy, yeah. So I think the challenge right now for us is to to see to um, well uh, inspire people to also come and visit us either in in Stockholm or in Nairobi. Yeah. Because this is going to be a fantastic event. Yeah. Uh, and after. COVID, people have become a bit more reluctant to going places, mm. which is in a way our, I mean, we have an option to be an online event, so that's all good. But I think for the people who are able sort of in the vicinity of, well, yeah. Nordic countries, for example, great, come to Sweden. Sure. Um, so that's a challenge to, to uh, not just for our Congress, I think, but for, for all kind of interactions in society today. We that's so much more rich to meet mm. and we have to uh, reclaim that yeah that uh, ability because it gives us so much more so i think that's probably one of the challenges that we 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 want people to come really yeah um yeah and then i think it's just a general kind of uh, organizing or, or orientating yourself in this as you mentioned this world right now it's it is actually a bit uh yeah you it's not all that uh, optimistic all the time mm. and i think uh our it's not really a challenge it's more like an opportunity but we uh we really need to do things together yeah. and we really need to come come across borders and 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 have these fantastic interactions and i think if we do that we become resilient as a human race, if you say, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I think that's that's where we are. We are needing to go right now. We can't let the systems and the digital and whatever sort of overtake, override. Yeah. And we have a lot to learn there from Kenya, who is still more sort of close to, would you say, the... <laughs> It, the networking and the relationships between people mm. um, are still very, very active and and alive. And I yeah. think here in Sweden we have a challenge because we're kind of we're perhaps separating sometimes the the body from the 
<laughs> from uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So maybe this <laughs> philosophical, but I think uh, yeah, let's meet, let's yeah, meet in yeah. person. That's the the it's like big... the human interaction. Yeah, because we are so much more than our screen. True. We are we are not even three dimensional. We're like five, six dimensional. Yeah, and you can only f feel that and in connection with the landscape if you if you yeah. You're in there. You're with you're with us together. Yeah. I totally agree. And I remember the one the ifla we attend in Oslo. Mm -hmm. It changed me so much, like uh, how I look at my profession, my mission in life, and also get this energy from everyone from different countries and exchange knowledge, experience, and also also like networking. So I couldn't get this if I was like just watching the screen. Of mm -hmm. course, I got something from the screen, but it's not the same at all. Mm -hmm. I think it connects a little bit to what you uh, were talking about with the artificial intelligence as well. Like, it's just that, that there are so many layers yeah. that, that a computer or a screen or, or uh, yeah, AI couldn't, can't do because we're humans and we have feelings and there's so many aspects to, mm. to our mind and body that, that need to be experienced mm. uh, together. So, yeah. and, and Johanna, you mentioned who can be part of this or attend this. Uh, but let's talk about organization. Who can be partner for IFLA 2023? Well, we... Uh, anyone. <laughs> no, but um, we've been... Uh, for for the Swedish part of the Congress, yeah. we've been reaching out a lot to... Um, to to AFRI, for example, yeah. and different architectural offices that uh, want to be part of this. And they're also the ones uh, arranging, for example, these pre-seminars that we have ongoing right now and and um, yeah, other events uh, during the, the Congress. So so anyone who feels like they want to contribute to to, to this Congress and, and uh, I think that are connected also in their work to, to these uh, questions mm. in different ways. Um, are are very welcome to to become partners, um, and then we of course have sponsorships and and, and that type of yeah, uh, um, but they might be more than uh, companies working with with uh, products, for example, mm. that help our profession in different ways. So, yeah, so you don't need to be a, a landscape uh, architecture studio to be a partner. You can be any organization or company related to this definitely, you know, definitely. let's say city development or or, land, or architecture or landscape mm. definitely definitely and we have ongoing work with uh, with others that aren't private in that sense uh, mm. also and and uh, when in kenya we also um, uh, connected a lot with the swedish embassy there for example and they are very interested in, in participating and joining in in different ways so we're really working in in, in a lot of wide and, and yeah. uh, wide range of, yeah. of reaching out to to um connect with anyone that that can contribute to this yeah, yeah. and and as a as a AFRI, we are very very honored to be partner for with ifla and uh, the most exciting thing also like now planning is that you don't put so much of guidelines and and managing micromanaging the content that we would love to share of course, it's going to align with the themes, but like what I love about this collaboration is that you're very open and, and for, for collaborating, for doing things together instead of just coming and say, you have to do this and that's it. So we, we are very happy and, and um, grateful for this collaboration. Yeah, and, and I think that's definitely one of the, the keys to, to uh, all of this is, mm. is that we don't program the program of course we program parts of the program but it is it i mean it's only together that we create and and the outcome can't be um it, it can't be what do you say like um pre uh, uh, yeah it, it's it's up to the initiatives and the needs of of the partners or or the people who who become engaged with this mm. exactly yeah. and the participants and the discussions and the experiences that's something that we need to to come from everyone uh, yeah. that's part of this yeah, yeah and i think i would just like to uh, promote also now you you mentioned uh, several companies so i in the building and architecture industry which is very very we're very happy to have them on board but i would also like to 
um, inspire other thing, other sort of organizations or municipalities or perhaps part different parts of the country in Sweden to organize something that could be like uh, showcasing also what, what's going on. Yeah. Because there's a lot of different things going on in Sweden. In the north, we have a lot of very exciting development. In the west part of the country, we have a lot of very interesting things and a lot of interesting prototypes and methods going on. In the south, there's also very much interesting going on. So it's also important to expand this so it doesn't become like a Stockholm event because it's not. Mm. It's it's a Sweden-Kenya event. Yeah. And uh, we would very much, I think, like to see uh, some kind of representation from the long and fast diverse country that we have. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think many people are listening to us as well, like municip- working in the municipalities and so on. It's like really easy to be part of this, like uh, reach out to you, Hannah. I will put your email as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I mentioned, like it's uh, very great collaboration. It's not like so much of... Uh, control or so so i'm i'm uh, i'm really happy about this way of working and um so when is the conference johanna it's in september uh, the dates are 28th through 30th of september yeah with the 28th and 29th them being the congress days and then we have a uh, day on the saturday on the 30th which is uh, more focused on going on study visits and exploring um physical landscape amazing and how is the weather going to be (laughs) (laughs) who knows (laughs) in kenya definitely it's going to (laughs) be good weather in uh, sweden uh, hopefully it's not snowy no no at least in in sweden uh, and the best it's still almost a little bit summer and yeah um, pre uh, yeah just uh, fall starting yeah it's a beautiful time i yeah, think yeah, it yeah. could definitely be that's so. why so many uh, conferences like happening in in september because the weather is beautiful yeah 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 so i'm li- really looking forward like uh, continue the journey of ifla we're going to do like listen to so many pre seminars as well and uh, also every we will be happy to have the one in august the one before the ifla so i'm looking forward to plan this together as well uh, now we are in the final section of this episode, and I have two questions for you. Mm-hmm. So the first one is about what are you looking forward? Like, what do you really or mostly looking forward to see during the IFLA? I think it's it's uh, what we've been talking about this this uh, fantastic, unique event where people come together and and just uh, yeah have the opportunity of of discussing. These questions that are so important to us and uh, everyone, actually. So I'm, I'm just uh, really uh, hoping for a lot of participation and, and people uh, joining, so that we can do this together. Awesome. And Emily, I'm very much looking forward to being the host of this event. I've uh, had the opportunity to visit other generous nations that have uh, introduced what they have to offer what their daily life and challenges are. And I think it's fantastic to be able to do this in Sweden and Kenya, of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought a lot about the host and so on. But now when you're telling this, like, the right decision, the right, the perfect (laughs) host, you have the perfect one. Oh, then, yeah. then I will attend the conference, like, yeah. <laughs> listening to Emily. Yes, she's awesome. the mother of, of this. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Come <laughs> to us. Oh. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so, and uh, the last question is about uh, each one of you giving a, a takeaway message to our listener. So, Emily, our uh, IFLA host. <laughs> I think um, we're in uh, a place right now in the world where there's a lot of Uh, action and uh, thoughts and dystopia going on in the general public discussion. And I think a takeaway message from this Congress is that we can together make a really bright future. I think that's probably the, the most important. There are things we can contribute. We can be a part and we do it through collaboration. So a lot of love, a lot of uh, bright future. That's what I would like to uh, be sort of the, the feeling, the sense of this, this whole event. That's beautiful. And Johanna, your message to our listeners. 
Well, I think it's very much the same, I think, just to um, believe in the future. Uh, we we really need to, and, and that we will try to focus this uh, Congress and these days together on solutions and, and uh, maybe not lingering too much in, in the problems, because uh, I think we already know those. Yeah. Um, of course, they will be part of it, but just to try to look into the future and, and believe in it. Yeah. And and uh, also really stressing that this is a unique event. And uh, I think that, uh, yeah, we, we can only do this together. Yeah, yeah. So we need to, to uh, be there, all of us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and my message also like to, to you as a listener is like, uh, check the website and, and really attend the conference of IFLA because personally I attend so many different conferences and IFLA is really one of the, the few, few, few conferences that you get so much back as a reward of uh, the physical interaction uh, and meeting other people. So check the website, email Johanna and uh, yeah, hopefully see you in September in Stockholm or Nairobi before people close to Kenya. So thank you so much, Johanna. Thank and, you. And uh, thank you so much, Emily, for being here. Thank you.